What is up guys, it is Biotech 716 aka Profit, and I'm here with a Battlefield 1 commentary really to talk over this decent, and I say decent because this is my first game of the day, and I have not really been playing Battlefield all too off, uh, much lately, but I am a Battlefield 1 and just Battlefield series veteran in general, I'd say. I've been playing hardcore ever since Bad Company 2, you know, like, that was my first, well, Bad Company 1 was my first Battlefield game. And, you know, with the news of Bad Company 3 and basically Battlefield World War 2 being announced by... I forgot what his name was, but he'll be linked in the description. The guy who basically leaked Battlefield 1 back in the day, he I think it was several months before it, he recently said if you've been living under a rock and avoiding Battlefield news, that Bad Company 3, Battlefield Bad Company 3, will be coming out in 2018, being made by Dice LA, which are the guys who make who made Hardline and work on the Battlefield 4 CTE, which I find interesting. And then the other Battlefield is a uh, Battlefield World War II game, basically. They don't have a title yet, but it's going to be the, by the guys who made Battlefield 1, which I thought the guys who made Battlefield 1 were also like the guys who make just the main series Battlefield games, but I mean, that's why I'm pretty sure what it is, Dice Sweden? I might be wrong with that, but I'd recommend checking out the video in the description for more information. Now also, the new DLC for Battlefield 1 came out, Turning Tides, I think only for premium members so far, and then the full version if you pay the $15-$20 for the regular DLC if you don't play, pay premium. I don't blame you. Uh, and the maps are pretty cool, honestly, so far. This was my first game, like I said, of even playing the DLC, and this was... I believe the map I saw in development over a couple months, which I found pretty cool that they were just developing these maps on the CT basically after the Russian DLC came out. And I was really looking forward to these maps, I mean, for a few different reasons, because the aesthetics of them looked really cool. But I was really hoping for some close quarters, just like really cool scenic maps, because that's what my favorite part, I guess, of Battlefield 1 is, because the maps all look just really amazing, and they're fun to play, and you feel like you're in a war zone. Feels cool to do stuff, because it looks real, really realistic. And uh, that's what these maps really do in general. These maps are pretty... Uh, they flow really well. I mean, they're not too big, not small i would say if they're any bigger they'd be too big basically i haven't really found any spots in the maps that are really problematic i'm just here slaying with the mg15 you know if i basically busted my kidneys to try to get this thing you know the challenge was so hard basically just me being a little bitchy but the uh challenges to get weapons in battlefield games are sometimes ridiculous I mean, I, I will forever give props to DICE for only doing cosmetic only and basically making new weapons uh, unlocks unlike Call of Duty. You know, Black Ops 3 was atrocious. That is literally one of the most... I, I love Black Ops 3, Call of Duty, but they j literally gave, like, good weapons and <laughs> supply drops you couldn't even earn. And to really end on the Turning Tides DLC, I haven't really played too much of it, but this gameplay will show off the map really well. It's a fun map. I'd, I'd recommend this DLC. I think that it took way too long to come out. Like, this DLC really should have came out months ago, and these DLCs should be free so everybody can play because it's just gonna split up the player base and cause Battlefield 1 to have a lower player base in the future just because people aren't gonna want to buy your DLCs and then eventually they're just gonna make these DLCs free like they did for Battlefield 4 and 3. I mean on separate occasions they did. But either way the maps are cool on Turning Tides. I'd recommend I'll post some more gameplay of it but you know like I said before I'm a Battlefield veteran and I really like that like I grew up basically watching you know don't blink the russian badger gameplay commentaries of battlefield and i kind of wanted to start producing my own content and hopefully improving on some of my predecessors i mean the russian badger doesn't do 30-minute commentaries anymore and you know this isn't going to be a 30-minute commentary but it's going to be over a 10-minute commentary i believe now let's really transition into the main topic I really want to talk to and that's the new Battlefield games, Battlefield Bad Company 3 and Battlefield World War 2. Now I'm going to speak more on Bad Company 3. I think it will be coming out after Battlefield World War 2, but I thought that 
it was really interesting that Battlefield back on B3 was announced. It's going to be pretty awesome. Like, I heard that the gameplay is supposed to be focused on Bad Company gameplay. It's set during the, cro the Cold War, which I find interesting, so that means it takes place before the first two Bad Companies, I don't know. So it's going to be different characters, perhaps, in terms of the single player. But the gameplay is going to be close quarters, you know, town-based, not open combat, like, you see right here in Battlefield 1, it's going to be much more close quarters, squad-based gameplay, but with the same, I mean, I want to say it's, I hope it's a bit more, <laughs> you know, frankly, I'm just going to be frank here, that guns do more damage, you know, in Bad Company 3, we had like three shot UMPs, I'm pretty sure, or in Bad Company 2, you know, the guns actually did damage, sniper rifles one-shotted if you just freaking no-scope somebody up to like 20 feet, that's what made Bad Company 3 to really really fun because it still it felt very fast paced and hectic and it felt like your bolts really did damage unlike here in battlefield one and that's really my main bout complaint about the battlefield one really experience is that you feel like you're just shooting bullet sponges and it doesn't exactly feel like a core battlefield i mean it does obviously but just like sometimes it just takes forever to melt people and so i hope that bad company two or three really just divert like basically what you'll get with bad company three in world war two you're going to get two different kinds of gameplay more of the open all-out vehicle gameplay with the battlefield one and battlefield world war two that you'd expect from there maybe even you could put battlefield four and three in there and then you'll have the bad company series which is going to be your close quarters not exactly all-out vehicles but some light vehicles and tanks and helicopters of course i mean they had apaches and bad company too so i hope they have it in bad company three but that'll be they have to it's the cold war but, you know, you're going to have much more, you're not going to see these open fields with no buildings and, or buildings to go into, basically, from, from your eyes to see. You know, you won't have that happen in Bad Company 3. You're going to see building to building to building that you can hop to every 10 feet. And you're, it's going to be much more close quarters gameplay. And it's also going to be focused on Rush and Conquest, which... Rush was so much fun in Bad Company 2, you can actually just go load up Bad Company 2, it's still a really fun game in my opinion, it still holds up, and you can load in Rush, and Rush feels so good, it's one of the best game, play or game modes because of the destructibility aspect to Rush, and no more in Rush in the main Battlefield games can you destroy the objective by using the environment, and I really love that aspect in Bad Company 1 and 2, I thought it literally made the game, like that was the mechanic that made the game really innovative and fun was the destructibility and then it, um, rush felt like the core game game mode even though conquest technically technically was but rush was just so robust it was just like a different game every single time you load it in because there was different ways to destroy each objective and multiple multiple different bases it was really ahead of its time in my opinion like back of me too was a really fun game and if you've never played it i'd recommend going back to play it you know, you've probably heard from your favorite Battlefield YouTubers, you know, Wes, he really likes praising it a lot. And, of course, Russian Badgers started there. The game's just excellent, so that's why I think Bad Company 3 is going to be really good. Now, I want to voice my concerns, though, because, like I said before, they're, it's being made by the guys who made the Battlefield 1, the Battlefield 4 CTE. I don't know, I don't believe they are the ones who made Bad Company 2 and 1 back in the day. Now, they probably worked in the team, nah, and of course they've been working on the Battlefield 4 CT, so they know what the Battlefield experience is, you know, like I think Battlefield Bad Company 3's gameplay is not going to differ much from Battlefield 4 gameplay, I really don't, or Battlefield 3's gameplay in terms of gunplay, like the guns are going to melt around the same, maybe a little bit faster, but like, it's going to be kind of similar, so... I think they know how to make a Battlefield game and how they, I, th I have trust in them to make a Bad Company game, but I, you know, like, there's just gonna be, a, it, it might feel a little bit weird, it might feel like Hardline, and I felt like Hardline felt off, like, Hardline was fun, but it's just like, it didn't really, it didn't have heart to it, in my opinion, I mean, you can debate with that in the comments, but that's just, it was not a Battlefield game I really played for long, and I, like I said, I've been playing since Bad Company 1. And it, I probably didn't put, put more than two hours into Hardline outside of the beta, you know, the beta was pretty fun, but then that was basically the whole game, <laughs> you know, like, as fun as you'd get out of that game. Now, I'll comment a little bit on World War Two, or Battlefield World War Two, whatever it's going to be called, it's probably going to be called Battlefield World War Two. 
I find it hilarious they're making a World War II game because that's just like, okay, COD decided to copy us to go back in time even though COD did this. You know, it's just kind of a moot conversation even arguing COD versus Battlefield at this point. You know, they've all done every era. They're just trying to switch it up. But they're doing World War II just like COD World War II just came out. So it's going to be like COD World War II just came out. Battlefield World War II, World War II is coming out next year in 2018 supposedly. I think it's going to come out before Back of the 3. Now, like I said, I wasn't really exact. I mean, I, I probably played more Battlefield 1 than any other Battlefield, but Battlefield 1 is not my preferred experience. And according to the leaker, it's going to share the same kind of gameplay of Battlefield 1. So it's going to be kind of like 4 to 5 to 6 shot to kill weapons. Snipers kind of suck, but it's large scale warfare. It's more, I want to say, realistic, but it's kind of like if you want that planet side 2, like large 64 man conquest with tanks, five tanks, you know, what you see right now, open landscape with uh air vehicles that's gonna be your kind of, you're gonna want to stick with that battlefield but i think most people are gonna actually end up preferring bad company 3 if they execute it well because there were i mean a lot of people dropped off of battlefield 1 but you know what i heard in terms of I, i'm really encouraged about is it both game i don't even know if bad company 2, 3 is gonna have cosmetic dlc in terms of microtransactions but i know that for world war 2 it was confirmed by the sleeker that they will have cosmetic only microtransactions so that is really good they aren't gonna bullshit around it's gonna be the same system as battlefield one is frankly i think battlefield one that's one of the best parts of it i mean you'll see at the end here i'm gonna open up some supply drops that they're selling the care package 1911 and i think it gets me kind of upset because i really want that's like the skin i really want outside of any other skin but i only i just got battlefield one for pc i actually uh, and like level 100 plus and xbox one and then i swapped over to pc so uh i don't have the scraps to buy it and it basically seems like i, have, I would have to pay money to even come close to it i mean not for veterans obviously but you know it's nice the fact that you can't pay to win in this game it definitely is it just makes the game more accessible and playable you know if someone can just go drop 200 dollars and i have to drop 200 hours to get the same thing that guy just dropped 200 dollars for i mean you can make your arguments in the description or i mean down in the comments but i just think it's a disincentive to even for me to play the game so that's why i can always respect battlefield on and that's why i'm really looking forward to battlefield world war 2 and back of May 3 and i'll try to report any news or make more videos in the future actually on battlefield because like i said i kind of want to take up the mantle of the old russian badger 30 minute commentaries talking about relevant vet battlefield gameplay in a smart uh fashion you know so i'll try to get my shit together but i really actually want to get a video up because i'm really i mean i've been thinking about youtube a lot lately and I really want to start making content again. I've been on YouTube since 2009. I'm like, God damn it, Chris, I need to make some. I need to stick with it. You know, I have more subscribers than I've ever had. Thank you for 850 plus subscribers. It's incredible, actually. And some of my videos have over 100,000 views. I think, you know, you guys have given me more views than I've ever gotten on YouTube before. It's pretty incredible that I <laughs> kind of just, like, threw it away in a sense by just uh, not making more content following out. But, you know... I'm here, I'm trying to make more, we're gonna stick through this shit, so if you've watched all the way through this commentary, I sincerely thank you, because I'm just a small, struggling YouTube out, YouTuber out here, trying to get his opinion across, and maybe hopefully someone can agree, or get a discussion out of it, so please, have a good one guys, and thank you for watching, see you on the next video, bye attack, out. First day, take it, I can fix your wounds.